Welcome everyone to the 2019 Lexus UX 250h F Sport. Quite a long name, quite a lot to break down about this subcompact crossover. Now, I've already tested out this UX250 in the luxury format, but this F Sport format brings a slightly different look on the inside and the outside. And there's enough to revisit when it comes to this car because I quite like the UX as a single individual or perhaps as a couple. If you're looking for a subcompact to facilitate the needs of you, your significant other, and perhaps your children, the UX might not be the car for you. So let's break down everything that's inside this car. And then at the end of this video, I'll place it in my ranking system to see where it competes against other subcompact crossovers. So for a lot of Lexus products, the F Sport is a very superficial package. It's something added on top to spice the looks up a little bit. And the same is largely true here in the UX, but there's a few more significant parts to the F Sport Series 1 and Series 2 that I think are worth looking into. So you'll get a lot of this dark chrome splattered throughout the car, like on the grille, on the fog lights and other areas of the vehicle. I think it really looks good. Inside, the most noticeable difference is going to be the F Sport seats. If you're six foot four, such as myself, you're going to be very happy in them. They're heated and ventilated in the F Sport Series 2 with the two-stage heated steering wheel as well. Despite the overall size of the UX and how you perceive the inside of it before you actually get into its cabin, the UX is slightly deceiving. It is a very small subcompact, probably the smallest in its class, and you'd think that that really carries over into the cabin space maybe for the back row, but definitely not the front row. Again, I'm six foot four, I feel like I have plenty of space, good amount of knee room and head room. Could I use a little more thigh sport? Yeah, of course, but that's every other car. The only problem I have when it comes to driving this vehicle is perhaps the placement of the steering wheel. For my height, it just doesn't raise up enough. I feel like it's really sitting in my lap. That's the only thing that bothers me about this driving position. When it comes to the ergonomics to the rest of the cabin, however, there is a lot to talk about here in the UX. There's a lot of interesting elements within this cabin that are in line with the rest of all of the new Lexus products, a lot of features that have come off of their flagships like the LC and the LS. But again, the UX is doing a few things differently. So some of the carryover items, you've got the 10.3 inch wide screen here. It's not a touch screen, you have to resort to the touchpad down here and then this interesting button arrangement, which I'll touch upon in a second, but it comes with Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto currently. And although I have had plenty of experience in a lot of current Lexus products with the touchpad, yes, it works, but it has a much more significant learning curve and can at times be a little difficult to operate in comparison to so many other brands that will offer a touch screen or offer a rotary wheel, for example, especially when you're in something like Apple CarPlay, going from each menu, I find is a little challenging with this touchpad. Directly beside that widescreen is the Lexus analog clock. And if you look closely, there's a little element within the timepiece that almost replicates the way that the grille looks. On top, we have the dials for your traction control and your different driving modes. Here in the F Sport, the Sport mode is a little bit more significant. You do get retuned suspension for the F Sport, but I think you'd really have to drive a regular Lexus and an F Sport Lexus side by side immediately to try and tell the difference because in all honesty, out of my recollection of that previous LX I tested out, I can't tell a difference in terms of ride quality or cornering ability. The piano keys that you'll have to interact with your climate control feel great and look great. I like how that is all spread about and then just below you'll have the physical buttons for your ventilated and heated seats. 
one of the problems I had in the LS is that you didn't have physical buttons for those elements. And I think that is crucial for anybody living in the kind of climates that we do, where the first thing you want to do when you start up your car is get your heated seat and steering wheel going and fire up as quickly as they can. Now, when you go further down, you'll have the wireless phone charger underneath that, your power outlet, a couple of cup holders, and then you'll get to the arrangement of the touchpad and this button arrangement here. So how you would naturally rest your hand and your palm over this red leather center console area, you can access the different forms of your media, tune radio stations or skip tracks and then turn the volume up. Although you can't see the majority of the buttons from this driving position, I can't see the volume wheel from here, just the way that your hand rests over each button and almost as though one finger has the ability to go for either one or two buttons, it all just works really quite well. I really like this system. But the touchpad, again, you'll have the haptic feedback on touchpad so you know when you've locked on to something to press, but other little quabbles with the interior, there's nowhere to put your sunglasses, there is no overhead compartment or little storage bin down by your knee. Uh, kind of a weird placement for the parking brake and there's a few scratchy plastics down below. Apart from those few scratchy plastics, a lot of the rest of the space is covered nicely in leather or soft touch plastics. All of the leather surfaces are beautiful. The padding on this headrest is very soft and it is simply a beautiful space to behold. A detail that's lacking here in the F Sport that was in the luxury version I had was pertaining to the little dials that you have for your venting system. In that car they were backlit and had this interesting 3D effect that isn't available here for whatever reason. In front of me I have the F Sport digital screen which was inspired by the LFA. The instrument cluster moves from the right hand side into the center changing around from eco, normal, and then into sport mode will give you a little different of a screen setup. And then you have a button here that wasn't in the previous Lexus I had. So I can only come to the conclusion that this is an F Sport specific feature. But when you're in sport mode, you'll get these artificial induction noises from the speaker system. I've come across a few vehicles that have that system, but I've never really noticed it unless I'm really searching for it. But with this vehicle, it is night and day to the point of being comical. So if I put the car in sport mode now, can you hear that difference? That isn't the engine. That is some kind of speaker playing artificial noise into the cabin and if I use the paddles to go through the eCVT you'll hear the Lexus come up with other noises to play along with it too. Yeah it's all just really quite strange. I'm not a fan of that system at all. Outside of those three driving modes you also do have the EV mode. Of course this is a hybrid and if the battery is charged up enough or the situation dictates it so, the car will go into pure electric driving. The powertrain is a two liter naturally aspirated engine with 181 net horsepower. You've got one electric motor for the front, another one for the rear. This has the same E all wheel drive system of what I've just been able to test out in the Toyota Prius where it's a motor that's dedicated just for the rear wheels and it can use electric power all the way up to 72 kilometers an hour, which the interesting thing with the Lexus is that for the standard model, the UX200, and with that, you can only have front wheel drive. To get all wheel drive, which I'm certain a lot of people are looking for in a subcompact crossover, they have to go with the hybrid. And their choices are limited in that respect. The only other hybrid subcompact that I can think of in the premium space is the Mini Countryman. The engine might be a little coarse, especially when you're demanding power out of it, going up a hill for example, but 
I haven't encountered the same sort of rattliness of which I've felt of the hybrids that I've tested out recently. The steering has a really nice weighting to it in the normal mode. In the sport mode, gets maybe a bit too heavy. Um, and when it comes to parallel parking, I find the brakes really jerky, not when I'm driving about regular in-town traffic like what I'm doing now, but perhaps it's that constant re-engagement of the electric motors that's causing a little bit of grabbiness. Of course, this does have a regenerative braking system. And when it comes to the rear seats, this is where the UX definitely suffers if you are planning to go out and buy a subcompact with the most amount of space possible. It is tight back there, I can just sit behind myself. And then for the boot space, again, another area where the UX suffers. You do have a very tall loading lip in this vehicle, and the hybrid system actually takes five cubic feet away from you. So you'll have a flat floor, but if you go with the front wheel drive model, you will have a lot more boot space available to you. Got a power outlet, a couple grocery bag holders, and then this funny security cover that folds up the same way that something like a reflective circle thing you use for film. And so that wraps up everything I wanted to say about the Lexus UX. Again, depending on your current scenario in life is really how you're going to view the UX. Perhaps it's just far too small for you and your needs, or perhaps it's the perfect size because you don't really need all of that utility. You just want a subcompact that's a hybrid, that's all-wheel drive, and that looks really quite good, and really is something that is a desirable item to own. So that is why I think you should test drive the UX. Depending on your situation in life, it's really going to change how you view on it. So that's been everything from me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watching this video. Please like it if you liked it and share it if you think other people will like it too. And if you want to do me the biggest favor in the world and hit that subscribe button, it really does mean a lot. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.